Would you like to be able to gracefully accept hearing no from other people? Hi, my name is Bruno Sade from brunosade.com. And today I would like to talk about how to use EFT to improve our boundaries, specifically in the area of hearing no from other people without taking it personally, without feeling rejected or hurt. This is one of the functions of our personal boundaries, which is that our personal boundaries allow us to say no to other people, allow us to accept being told no by other people, and allow us to avoid suffering trying to control the uncontrollable. Today, I'm going to talk about how to use EFT to improve our ability to hear no from other people. So what is it that can get in the way of being able to hear no from other people? Basically, is our negative or unpleasant emotional reactions. Intellectually, we might know that just as we have the right to say no to other people, to decide what it is that we want to do or not do with our time, our energy, our money, our attention, etc., the same applies to other people. They have the right to say no to us. But sometimes that can make us feel rejected or hurt or it can trigger us in some way. So how can we work on this with EFT? As usual, we want to go from the general, the global issue, such as I can't help but take it personally when someone says no to me. I can't help but feel rejected. I feel hurt whenever someone says no to me. We want to go from that to a specific event, a specific sort of movie scene. And when I say movie scene, I mean something that we could see or hear with our senses. So first of all, think of one person that if they were to say no to you in some shape or form, it would make you feel bad or it would feel emotionally painful in some way. So maybe it could be a relative, it could be an acquaintance, it could be a friend, a co-worker, someone else. And as you think about that person, imagine how would they say no to you? Like what is a request or a question you might ask them that they might say no to that? So let's say that I'm thinking about asking someone if they'd like to have dinner with me and it would be a specific person. So as I imagine that situation taking place, the first useful question to ask ourselves is what sensory elements within this made up scenario am I focusing on the most or would trigger me the most? For example, maybe it's the way that they would say no to me. Or maybe it's that other people might be watching that interaction. And so what would they think about me? If I imagine their facial expressions as they hear how I am, quote unquote, rejected. So my first tip in terms of how to use CFT to improve our ability to hear no from other people without taking it personally, to diminish those unpleasant emotional reactions that we might have that could get in the way of being able to gracefully accept being told no by other people is to make it very tangible, very concrete, very specific. Here's an example of a statement we might use as we start a tapping round on the side of the hand. Even though when I imagine asking her if she'd like to have dinner with me and she says, um, I'm sorry, I can't. The way she says it, it seems like she's very uncomfortable by me asking her that question. And that makes me feel really embarrassed. And I feel this embarrassment in my chest area. And I accept this is what I'm feeling right now. So that would be an example of a statement we might use in basic EFT as we use it to tap on a specific event, thinking about the event itself, the situation, what part of the event I'm focusing on the most, the way she says, I'm sorry, I can't. And it makes me feel Right now, when I think about it, it makes me feel embarrassed. I feel this embarrassment in this part of my body. And I accept this is what I'm feeling right now. The other very useful question to ask ourselves when we are working on these kind of events is, what do I believe this means about me? For example, the fact that she might say, no, I'm sorry, I can't. I interpret it as meaning that I'm too boring or I'm too, I'm too lame etc 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 by the way i'm thinking about like a future made up scenario but maybe you might be thinking you could also tap on a past event that as you think about it still hurts so whether it's a past memory or a future made up scenario as long as it 
evokes or generates an unpleasant emotional reaction when you think about it now, you can tap on it. So an example of a setup statement we might use on the side of the hand as we think about what does this mean about me could be, even though when I imagine asking her if she'd like to have dinner with me and she says, um, I'm sorry, I can't, I guess this means that I'm really boring to spend time with. And that makes me feel sad. And I feel this sadness in my throat area. This is what I'm noticing right now. So that would be another example of a setup statement that we can use to start a tapping round. These two questions focusing on the sensory elements within these events, these specific events where we might hear no from a specific person and the meanings we associate to why they might be saying no to us or what does this mean about us can be very important pieces to focus on as we work with EFT to improve our ability to accept being told no by other people because that is the right and it's respectful of their boundaries to acknowledge and respect their decision. And as usual, as you start tapping on a specific event, especially if it's like a future made up scenario, sometimes what might happen during a round of tapping or after a round of tapping is that a previous memory, a memory from the past suddenly pops up, comes to mind, and is probably connected to why we feel triggered when someone says no to us. And when this memory comes up, you can make a note of them you can decide if you want to work on them right then and there or at some other point. And if you want to do it by yourself or with the help of a certified practitioner, especially if it seems like it might be too emotion intense, it can be helpful in those cases to work with a practitioner. This is one of the areas that I help people in my one-to-one -one sessions. So that's it for today. I hope this was useful and I look forward to seeing you again in one of my next videos.